Welcome to Flip It Furniture. My name is Amy, and today we're making over this jewelry armoire. I found this on Facebook Marketplace, and I'll tell you, I was so excited. From the pictures, it looked so grand and, and big and beautiful. And when I went to go pick it up, Honestly, I know I'm gonna sound stuck up, but I was so disappointed. It was so tiny. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, one of those beautiful jewelry armoires, like super fancy. I went ahead and I bought it anyway. And the hardware, you can see the screws on them and it's just a little flimsy. Even these little designs, I don't, they're just not great, right? They're okay. I have been staring at this piece for over a month now, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with it. And then I remembered something. It doesn't matter how cheap a piece looks or how small it might be. It's my job as a furniture flipper or furniture artist, whatever you wanna call it, to make it shine again. If it's the screws on the hardware that are making the piece look cheap, it's my job. I need to make sure that the eye is being drawn elsewhere so that they don't look at the screws. If the piece is small and I want it to look grand, I need to give it the right colors or maybe make something pop on it to really stand out and go, wow. So now I'm super motivated and I feel like, yes, I can do it. And I'll tell you what, I don't think that this piece is a princess and I love doing princess makeovers. I think it's sassy and a little mysterious and just really different. So that's what I'm running with. First things first, I need to remove all the hardware. And to clean this entire piece, I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. When I finish with the cleaner, I just take an old t-shirt or a rag, whatever I can find, and rinse it down with some warm water. Now I'm using Dixie Belle Slick Stick, and this is a bonding primer. I'm using this because there's a lot of MDF on this piece, and it is pretty slick, the surface, so I don't want to take the chances that my paint won't adhere properly. Using this, I just have a nice peace of mind, and I don't have to worry about it. When I'm taking out the drawers, I like to mark the bottoms. This one I'm gonna do one through five since there's five, and then I won't get mixed up when I have to put them back. So I have two coats of Slick Stick on here, and I waited 12 hours to paint, but I'm seeing this yellowing in the creases, and I'm not sure what it is. I know it's not bleed through, but it could be um, cigarette smoke stains, which I don't know why that would be since it doesn't smell. So I am gonna use um, Dixie Belle's Boss and I just do two coats of that just because it is a stain and I don't know what the stain is from. You don't have to do that. You don't have to use two primers but I'm doing it for myself just for peace of mind because I am selling this piece. Now I've started my first coat and this black color is called Caviar. This is Dixie Belle's um, Truest Darkest Black. I love to mess around on my first coat and try some things out and experiment where I want my colors to be. This is Dixie Belle's Stormy Seas. So far I have the caviar on the legs, now I'm just going to add it to the top. And again, I'm just testing it out, just seeing what is going to look good for that second permanent coat. 
My first coat is dry and now I'm moving on to the second coat. This is the coat that I have to be pretty careful about because this is the one that we're gonna see. This is the permanent coat. Blending spindles or legs can be pretty intimidating, but once you do it a few times, it gets easier and easier. You just have to make it a little bit easy on yourself. So I'm applying the black with the black brush, and then I go ahead and I apply the Stormy Seas with the Stormy Seas brush. I'm not really going through the colors yet. I'm just trying to get the paint wet again. So both of my colors are on, nothing is blended. I grab my third brush and it's completely dry and I just start to softly, like it as if my brush was a feather, just move it back and forth. I even tap it sometimes just to move those colors around right where one color begins and the other color ends. I'm not going into the colors, you know, not too much, just a tiny, tiny bit and I'm constantly wiping the paint off of that dry brush to keep it nice and dry. Since it's such a small area that we want blended, you don't really have to go up or down the leg. You just concentrate on that one area, softening up the colors. And for the top, I'm gonna follow that same process I did on the legs. And I'm not gonna put this dark color on the back. I'm only gonna do it the sides and the front. I just want it to be a soft blend. I just want it to look like a shadow. So I'm mostly gonna use the Stormy Seas. And then just as like a shadow effect along the edges, I'll have the caviar. So again, I'm just applying the colors with my brushes and then most of the work is gonna be done by that dry brush for this. And here we go with the dry brush. I'm constantly making sure that I keep that dry brush dry so I'm wiping it with a paper towel. Now I'm using the Dixie Belle Silk Green Stencil, and this one's called Delicate Lace. These stencils are just extremely easy to use. That's why I like them. They stick on your piece so you don't have to worry about bleed through. Then they have this new tool called the thingamajig, which makes it really easy to apply. You just dip the thingamajig into the caviar just a little bit and then spread it all over the stencil.
After removing the stencil, you want to clean it up really good with some water. I clean it up and then I let it dry and then I go ahead and use it again. Three different stencils came with the delicate lace um, silkscreen stencil from Dixie Belle. So this is just one of them that I'm using on the drawer fronts because I want to change up the look a little bit from the sides. Now for the hardware, I'm using the slick stick again to cover the hardware, doing two coats and waiting a couple hours before I apply my paint. This is the bonding primer and I'm using it because I just want to make sure that that chalk paint sticks to my hardware. Then I'm going in with the chalk paint and I'm using um, Dixie Belle's Stormy Seas again because I want this to all be cohesive. While I wait for that to dry, I'm going to seal this entire piece with Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. And I have to say, once you put the satin on stormy seas, it brings out the color so much and it makes it look so satiny. And I mean, of course it's satiny, but it really does look like satin. It's just super silky and I don't know, it makes the color really brings it out. It's just gorgeous. And now that hardware is dry, so I'm also sealing the hardware. Once everything is sealed, I can go in with uh, Dixie Belle's Best Sting Wax in the color black. I'm gonna use this on the hardware to make all those details pop. I use a baby wipe to wipe back and this wax is gonna stay in all those details and we're just wiping it off so that we get that pop of stormy seas also. So now we have two colors and it gives it that awesome depth and dimension that I'm always looking for. So now I decided it needs another little pop and I have the gilding wax zinc and I've never used it before. So I thought since the stormy seeds is sort of blue, green, gray, that this would be perfect. You can always apply gilding wax with a brush and I actually highly recommend it. I do use my finger all the time, but I have to check for my shortest nail because it will get stuck under your fingernails. <laughs> Now I'm taking that wax over to the jewelry armoire and I'm applying it in all the details. I'm going to just give it, again, some of that depth and dimension on the front. Wax reminds me of putting makeup on. You, you're beautiful without it, the color is really pretty, but just to accentuate those details, it's like eyeliner, you know, to make your eyes really pop, you just wanna give it some color. And like right now, that's like eyeshadow, you know? You don't want too much of it, but you want a little bit in those details just to accentuate the features. Now 
I was having a little bit of trouble getting most of it off, so I just did a little spritz of water and that helped a whole bunch. Vesting wax is water resistant, but it's also water based. So I can still seal this afterwards. And that is one thing I absolutely love about this wax. And just a little reminder of how it looked before. Here it is after. I think we did a really good job with the hardware. Those screws were driving me crazy at the beginning, but I feel like you can't really tell that there's screws in there anymore. Did I accomplish the sassy and mysterious look? Let me know in the comments what you think. And don't forget, if you liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I will see you next week.